Everybody, I'm Bertha Coombs. I cover healthcare services at CNBC, and joining me today is Alec Gorlay. He is the co-COO for Walgreens Boots Alliance. Alex, so great to have you with us today. Thank you, Bertha. It's great to be here. Thank you for the invite. Much appreciated. It has been quite a year for you guys. Uh, you know, it seems as though all of the retail pharmacies have been reimagining themselves essentially trying to be that front door to health care, literally on our corner. You are around the corner from me. And among the things that you've done, you've looked at uh, having optometry, you've looked at having dentistry. Now you've partnered with Village MD to try to sort of bring some of those services home. But this year, I have to imagine, it's the digital strategy that has really been galvanized. What's been happening since the pandemic struck and all of a sudden people really embraced telehealth? Yeah, it's been quite an extraordinary time for all of us, both in our professional lives and our private lives. And we've all had to change how we get products and services. And healthcare has become even more important for people than ever before. And therefore, the corner of pharmacy, the corner drugstore has become even more essential in people's lives. And uh, what we focused on was really three simple things. One was making sure that our pharmacies and our people were safe and our patients and our customers were safe. Because in the early days of the pandemic, people were incredibly scared. They're scared today, but they were incredibly scared in these first few weeks and months. Secondly, make sure that essential services, the medications you get, uh, the, the disinfectants, the hygiene products were available as best we could and fantastic work by our teams and our suppliers. And third, to your point, really focusing on what we call the transformation of our business which is really the fact that people engage so much more digitally, particularly during the pandemic, and they want to receive information, products and services through mobile technology, laptop technology. Uh, and it was an incredible focus and an incredible period of time and change for Walgreens for sure. What kind of uh, shift did you find yourself having to do? And I'd imagine it accelerated a lot of your plans. You know, we've all sort of lived a lifetime over these last seven months. Yeah, so we, we had to make sure that people felt really safe when they came and did their, their healthcare shopping and their everyday shopping at a drugstore called Walgreens and doing read, of course, in New York. So we changed a number of things really quickly. We, we made uh, home delivery available nationwide for prescriptions and for front of store. Uh, we quickly made the drive-through available to receive more essential products along with your prescription medication through the drive-through. Uh, we had already a platform called Fine Care. And in that platform, uh, we allowed people to be able to see what was the best solutions for them and their families, particularly as COVID testing became a feature, mm. particularly as uh, people wanted more information about COVID and the impact it was having on themselves, their families and their communities. So, uh, so we did a number of things really quickly uh, to make sure that people got the products and services and the information they wanted in a safe environment from Walgreens. How much adoption did you see of Find Care? Did you see a, a big spike overnight? Yeah, absolutely. We've seen incredible adoption. It was, it was already accelerating. But the acceleration, I heard someone else say that uh, there's been 10 years of a digital acceleration in 10 months or five years in five months, whatever the cliche is, I guess, is true. <laughs> Absolutely true. Yeah. So we, we saw, you know, uh, gosh, uh, I think uh, we, we're, we're now seeing about eight and a half million customers annually uh, coming through the fine care. And that's way up. That's hundreds of percent up year on year. 
uh, an incredible adoption, an incredible interest in health information and solutions on, online. Incredible. And of course, you're trying to provide care at some of your locations. You have a number yeah. of partnerships, but I'm very curious about this one with Village MD. What, what's your village? What's your village? What's your vision for that? Well, we, we truly believe that the pharmacist and the primary care physician, the family doctor, are two of the most trusted people in, uh, for healthcare in communities, if not the most trusted. And together, you get double, double trust, I guess. And uh, we also believe strongly uh, that having the doctor and the pharmacist not just together physically, but more importantly, together digitally, sharing information, being able to access uh, healthcare at home or through the digital app, through telemedicine or, or pharmacy chat, as well as physically in your local corner drugstore, we think is incredibly important. So we've seen again uh, through the pandemic, through our partnerships, we're only currently in five physical locations down in Houston. Uh, we're about to ramp that up to 40 in the rest of our fiscal year. And we have plans to be at least in 500 within the next five years, we believe we'll be able to be more than 500. And putting together the family doctor with a local pharmacist, with health information that you provide to us in a trusted way that's all HIPAA compliant, and providing really local solutions for local patients and customers, uh, both physically and digitally, we think is, a, is a, an idea that will help to really open up, as you said in your opening comments, Bertha, the front door of healthcare to primary care in America. How difficult is it to roll that out under these circumstances, given that we are seeing a surge in the number of communities right now? And obviously, there's tremendous competition to sign up physicians and, and have these telehealth prop, uh, properties and, and platforms up and running. How, how hard is it to get it together right now? Well, we, we are finding it's accelerating. Uh, the interest is accelerating for sure. Because, uh, you know, for example, uh, when, Will when Village MD uh, introduced their, their, uh, their ability to telemedicine, uh, as well as home visits, as well as coming into their primary care practices, their doctor surgeries, uh, they found a huge pickup in telemedicine and a huge interest in home, home health care. So I think it depends how you want to look at it. The adoption has been so strong and people are getting so used to having visits to their healthcare providers, the doctors and their pharmacists through, te through technology that has been adopted really quickly. So I think that's an accelerator for ourselves and for many other people, as you said, in the marketplace who are also trying to accelerate primary care in different ways. It's interesting because when you think about sort of the, the last pandemic, it was very transformative for a lot of pharmacies like yours. When we had the H1N1, that's when we started introducing the concept that maybe the pharmacist could be the key point for immunization. Absolutely. And uh, it's, it's remarkable in less than, well, just about 10 years. Every single pharmacy, more or less across the land, is now giving flu shots. Well over a third of flu shots in any given year are now given by your local pharmacist. And our pharmacists love, I'm a pharmacist by training, not from this country, you can tell by the accent. It's so different to when I was practicing pharmacy that you're able to actually give these services, give these advice, and add real value. Uh, many people don't realize that the pharmacists in America are the second most educated healthcare professionals after doctors. So the ability to really use pharmacists in, in different ways associated with their profession, uh, but make it really local is just huge for the healthcare system. And again, I agree with you completely, Bertha, this, this opportunity to accelerate that further as a positive outcome of this particular pandemic to improve local healthcare through better, better use uh, of fantastically qualified pharmacists. You know, we have 27,000 pharmacists in Walgreens alone in corners in America, what more can they do to really help community health care in the way we've been describing? So I think it's a very ex exciting period for pharmacists and one that technology will unlock in a very different way, even faster than 10 years ago, in my view. How much more do you see pharmacists doing? I wonder about 
maybe throwing too much on their plate. I know when I go to my corner pharmacy, uh, a lot of times they have a lot going on. They're trying to fill the prescription. They're trying to give some counsel as well. So it, it does make it a little bit, it seems overwhelming for them sometimes. Yeah, and I want to give a call out to all pharmacists. It's October in America, and October is Pharmacist Month. So to all pharmacists watching uh, this healthcare conference, uh, uh, you know, thank you for all you do uh, for communities, particularly during this pandemic. They've done an amazing job. I don't care whether they work for Walgreens. I'm very proud of the Walgreens pharmacists. Of course I am. I'm a bit biased. But all pharmacists, thank you for what you've done. And we've got to free them up, uh, Bertha, from the tasks they did yesterday. The, the, the action of putting tablets in a bottle or answering the phone to the payers or getting a medication sent through, that can all be taken care of through better technology. And that's what we're investing in. Mm-hmm. And that's what the industry is investing in right now. So take away all of that work that is not required to be done by the pharmacist, can't be done by technology or people who support the pharmacist, and free them up. Uh, to be able to do more services that are associated with their profession. So, for example, COVID testing is another great example that's happening right now. The COVID vaccine is around the corner. And there'll be other, I'm sure, areas where through uh, what we call test and treat, where it's perfectly known uh, ways to diagnose safely and perfectly safe that can be recommended under certain state regulations that pharmacists can do. So we're really excited about how that will evolve uh, appropriately over the next decade and how we can even make more of our farms available to do these really important but very local and often simple services on behalf of people, patients, community and the healthcare services. Uh, Continuing on this issue of of the vaccines, um, what are you seeing without, I know know we're in the quiet period, but are you seeing people actually take up the flu vaccine, there's been such a push on that. And what does that tell you about how to prepare for what we hope is an eventual vaccine for COVID? Yeah, we've seen an incredible uh, take up of vaccines for the flu season this year so far, uh, well above the normal season. Uh, And uh, we we think somewhere between 30 and 50% more people will will get a flu shot this season. Uh, And uh, these numbers are coming true as we as we speak here today. Uh, I think it tells you that people are much more aware of their health, much more prepared to protect themselves, uh, much more concerned about differentiating between the symptoms of the common flu and the symptoms of COVID this year. So I think people's awareness of the importance of protecting yourself and your family have become much greater in this uh, during this pandemic. And I think these behaviors, like many other behaviors, will stick into the future. So when and if hopefully we do get a vaccine and we may get more than one, we know that Pfizer's is gonna need some real delicate handling because it does have to be kept extremely cold. What kind of preparations are you doing and and what can you tell us about sort of the the logistical, uh, you know, advance work that's being done to make sure that once we do have full capacity, we're really going to be able to get it out to people. I think the industry has been incredibly open and really partnership driven. So we're in regular conversations with the five manufacturers, including Pfizer, who are into the final stages of clinical tests. We're in regular conversation with HHS, CDC. Uh, Every day our teams are speaking and also with other retail partners as well to make sure that when that vaccine is available, when it's uh, available, we are ready you know, uh, to work with uh, all of our partners to bring it safely to the marketplace. Uh, so it's been incredible collaboration, incredible pace and energy. Uh, and, uh, and Walgreens, like many other uh, providers, are really willing to play our part. We saw that collaboration when it came to testing. And yet, even to this day, there are issues with supply bottlenecks and a delay in trying to make this as smooth as possible. What have you learned from that process? And what do you think the the healthcare industry has learned from that process to try to avoid that if we do get this crush of demand for vaccine next year? Yeah, it was was an incredible moment uh, when this pandemic hit us. And I think people did their very best to, to react 
to the emerging evidence of how to contain and control uh, COVID-19. And testing was a great example of that. But the truth of it is that uh, the testing capacity wasn't available. Uh, and it's now becoming available. You know, I can give you the, what we're doing in Walgreens, but it's now becoming more and more available. And I just think there's a timeline uh, when, you, when you ramp up any supply chain, particularly one that's specialised as testing or vaccine, you have to get to before you can make it available to meet demand. And that's probably the single biggest lesson. We probably spoke too, too much about the supply, the supply of the testing when it actually wasn't available nor did we really understand exactly how important testing was. And clearly testing is really important as we try and control this, uh, control this, uh, this, uh, this pandemic. And, you know, when you think about where Walgreens will be years from now, you know, 10 years ago, you might not have yeah. imagined that most people would go to their corner drugstore to get their immunizations. I mean, I, you know, you get your, your Shingrix, you can get your kids immunized, all sorts yeah. of things that you used to have to go to the doctor for. So as you envision what Walgreens will look like, how different will the stores be? How different will the experience be? Will there be less makeup when I come into the front of the store, less stuff at the front of the store? Is it going to be more about the back of the store? Yeah, I, I would imagine that with Walgreens, you'll see much more focus on pharmacy, health, and we call it well-being, which is the end-to-end -end piece of our beauty and how people feel about themselves. We, we also imagine there'll be uh, still very much about curative, you know, curing uh, common acute illnesses, uh, but also about prevention. You know, the level of prevention will be able to, and solutions for prevention, will be able to dispense and give will be significantly more than people are looking for today. We also believe that the role of pharmacists will be quite different. You know, they'll be in the community. They'll be able to you know, be at home. They'll be working much more closely with primary care doctors, with nurses, with specialists, both physically and digitally. And there'll be some things that will never really change, I don't think, about the local corner drugstore. I think you'll be able to get appointments when you need them. Just walk in, as you can do today, and speak to a really well-qualified healthcare professional. I think you'll be able to get the things that you've forgotten that you need urgently for yourself and your family in a Walgreens, either delivered to your home or picked up in your store. I think there'll be uh, even more reasons to visit your local community pharmacy for healthcare and other items that are really important to your life. Because of course, what we all have to do in this modern world is maintain relevance for customers. And our relevance starts with the enormous emotion that is for people in healthcare and in personal care. There's nothing more important in people's lives than their health. And the more that we can demonstrate that we are able to bring the best solutions, the more I think will be relevant and the more we'll be able to meet the modern needs of modern patients, communities and customers. Hopefully, especially in communities that are underserved and where you do have issues with health equity. Yeah, it's, it's so important to 